Boy, I need to go sneeze. Y'all bear with me just a moment. All right, guys. Hello, hello, hello. See, Justin is on his way. Hallelujah. I don't know if you guys know this or not. Justin works at the university that is like literally, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not being figurative. I'm not uh, over exaggerating or anything. He literally works like the next block over at the university. So the university is here, and his office is there, and then his house is like. Pull out of the parking lot, drive down the street, pull into his garage. So he says it actually takes him less time to close the door of his car, drive to his house, pull in the driveway, go inside and sit down than it does for him to get out of his uh, out of his chair at the office and walk to his car. Creepy, right? Cool, right? So he will be here in just a second. Don Carly Carlson says that she is here sort of. We'll take anything we can get at Sweetie. I don't know if you guys know this, or if I've said, have I told y'all? I didn't tell y'all. So my oldest daughter, Jaina, goes to a private school in Fort Worth, and my youngest daughter, or other daughter, or um, alternate daughter, <laughs> Gigi, Jillian, we call her Gigi, um, is homeschooled. She was private, or not private school. No, she was. They were both private schools when they first got started. But Jillian was in public school for a few years, and uh, we decided to homeschool her. So she homeschools every morning here, um, first half of the morning, with uh, my Aunt Dawn, actually. She is her teacher. And so, let's see, I'm on the phone with Ian. Hey, hey, tell Ian he needs to log in and watch the show. Seriously, come on. <coughs> All right, let's see here. Christopher Hall, I am here, but also watching that church summit as well. Well, you can mute that church summit. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> I hope that's going well. There should be a lot of good info there. Uh, today, guys, we're going to be hyper-practical. We are talking Easter, Easter planning. Uh, if you guys aren't already in the Easter planning mode, then you're going to be very quickly, I would think. Okay. By the way, y'all, I sent out an email yesterday, um, or I attempted to send out an email yesterday, and there was some sort of a glitch, and I'm, I've actually been, like, talking with the uh, people. Just to, you know, here's a here's an insight. Um, no matter what email system you're using, whether it's MailChimp or ActiveCampaign or, you know, Drip or, you know, Constant Contact or AWeber or Bill and Ted's Excellent Church emailing service or whatever like that, there is going to be times when something glitches and something uh, goes wrong and it just doesn't happen. Yesterday, I sent out an email um, with uh, links to the pro tip and my review of the uh, church audio. Church, what is it called? On uh, Audio Bible. Daily Audio Bible. Um, and I sent the email out, and it said it was sent, and then I went today just to see how many people had opened it and, and had uh, you know, taken a look at the, uh, the contents of the email, and there was like nothing there. And so I reached out to the help people, and they were like, hey, it looks like it got stuck somewhere in the system. So they immediately escalated it to the, uh, to the people that like get into the minutia of all this sort of stuff, and I'm just waiting to hear back from them. So if you guys end up getting another email from us today, and it's that one, then, sorry, that meant to go out yesterday, but there was a glitch in the system. But the one that I sent out for the show, as you guys know, is in your inbox right now. Uh, let's see here. Still waiting on Justin to join. He's going to be joining here in just a few minutes, and then we're going to get started. We're actually going to do the show a little out of, out of order because Justin's got to get back for a meeting at noon. So he really needs to leave at like 10 till. So we want to get to the... Excuse me, good Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> I will try not to do that during the show show. 
um, he's going to want to uh, get out of here like a tin till. So we're going to we're going to go through the content first, and then I'm going to do the pro tip, and then I'm going to do the closing and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> and we have a lot of stuff. We got a list of 21 things that you need to get you need to consider uh, doing uh, in preparation for uh, your Easter weekend, which is coming up in 10 weeks, by the way. Uh, let me see. I'm going to go and check on our fine friends over at YouTube and see if anybody has shown up over there. Conrad Martin usually jumps in over there. Uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, guys, if you would, if everybody would um, go and share this real quick, uh, just share this to your profile, share this to uh, your pages or groups or whatever that you're in. Um, we'd really appreciate it. We want to grow this live audience, even though, you know, this this is not the fully produced show that we do. This is you guys joining us for the taping of the show, of the podcast and all that sort of stuff. We really like interacting with you guys. So I get I, I get a lot of joy and it amps up both of us when we see Christopher Hall in here, Aunt Dawn in here or Justin or uh, excuse me, Jordan um, or any of the other guys. So um, y'all be sure to share this. Let's grow this group. Let's see. Hello, hello. Are you there? Wa-bang. Wa-bang. Yes, I am here. There you are. Hi. All right. I hear you. I see you. You look lovely. The lighting looks good. Your background looks good. Let me get yeah, this. Yeah, how's the lighting? The, 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 the preview in the WebEx, or not WebEx, Zoom, doesn't look the same as it looks live. Yeah, we, um, you know, there's still that... Uh, you know, as soon as you move your hand in front, you can see the audio exposure uh, changes and all that. Mm. We still we still got some dialing in to do, but it's already, you know. See, oh yeah, that. it does. Look at that. Yeah, it's it's already because oh, it's using FaceTime. Hang on, let me switch it to the USB. Oh. Okay. okay. There you go. You're gonna have to tweak it there, son. Tilt it down just a hair. Yeah. See, the preview doesn't look like what actually shows live. Uh, so that's let's the tough see. Thing. Increase your. Um, Incre uh, pull down your saturation just a hair and increase your contrast. How about that? Um, that's better. Okay. Let's see here. Get your position up good. Oh, and I upgraded my internet. You did? What'd you upgrade it to? 110. Nice. That is awesome. And and what was it for, or what was it originally? Uh, 32. Man. Yeah. So I don't know if that'll make a difference or not uh, in the quality, but we'll see. It will, definitely. I'm at 200 by 20. See, my settings changed on me again. Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, we're going to have to do a little yeah. playing. Let's see here, folks. I'm going to, I'll toss him on here so y'all can see him. <laughs> we are going to get started in just a second. Just doing a little All right, how is that? Here. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Okay. And. See, cool, and, and the cool. cool the cool thing you're not is, getting so you're not getting my hair it's cutting off the hair the hair is the brand dave i know i'm working on it hang on hang on <laughs> let's see here all right tilt your tilt your camera up just a hair there you go how's that yeah that'll work all right so we got all some right. hair and let me center you up there you are. Okay, cool. All right. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Oh, you want to see something cool? Watch this. Okay, this is for this is for all you kids in the in the uh, in the in the chat room there. Um, yes, Justin does have his set. He absolutely does. It's extremely, extremely awesome, and the awesomeness just That's continues right. to increase. Um, when we uh, when we go out to the lot to the wide shot on me. You'll actually see there's a bookshelf, 
and a uh, little canvas behind me. It's 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 turning out really well. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I dig. Hey, you took care of that seam in the corner too. That's awesome. I did. I did. I hemmed. I hemmed the brick wall. Yes, you did. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Okay, check this out, guys. Y'all watch this. Y'all y'all cool folks in the in the chat room there. Y'all see these lights behind me here? The ones that are at the top of the uh, of the of the bookcase. This is one of the things that's really cool about Alexa. Watch this. Alexa, turn off my lights. Where did Alexa go? Alexa, turn off my lights. Oh, how about that? Alexa, turn on my lights. Oh, ain't that cool? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you should see the delay here in just a second. <laughs> you get, I'm trusting you. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. I got a couple of those little sockets that you the the that you can pair up oh, with smart sockets. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, so those I'm, are awesome. Yeah, I've got some smart bulbs already in the house, and now I'm um, uh, I've got I've got to get them working. I've got to do a little if this then that uh, hacking uh, to get them to work because they were made before any of this started happening, and um, so I've got to do that. And but I'm, I've put some in there. I've got one in my nightstand, so. I can lay there and say, Alexa, turn on my nightstand, and boop, there it comes. What happened to the good old days where you would clap and your lights would turn off? <laughs> when I was a kid, this was before the clapper, my parents, or my, my mother, one Christmas, or, or maybe it was my Aunt Dawn, I can't remember, this may have been a Christmas Eve thing, um, but my, they gave my dad, it's called the whistle switch. And it was a um, it is a, a box, you know, with a little uh, a little microphone up on the top, and it had a plug, and it had a little dial where you could like turn it to turn it on, turn to turn it off, you know, a manual override, right? And he put that on his um, on his nightstand light, and it had this little vi uh, plastic kind of a, a, a squeeze box. Okay, so think of it think of it being a box with a hole in it, and you can squeeze it, and the air comes out and Across, across the, the end of it was a little plastic whistle. So you'd squeeze it and we'd go like really high pitched sound and the light would turn on and he'd squeeze it and he'd go and then boop, the light would go off. It was really cool. The whistle switch. Huh. Yeah. And you could also make a really sharp noise and it would turn on or off. So I could walk into the room if I didn't have it, I'd go, ah, really loud <laughs> and whoop, the light would come on. <laughs> Wasn't good when mom was taking a nap though. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let me bring up the. Uh, have you checked the uh, the YouTube live yet? Yes. Um, no. No comments yet. Okay. That is fine. All right. I am going to. Where did it go? Where to go? There's my notes. Cocked and loaded. I've got your sample website. Boom. There it is. Again, cocked and loaded. And we are good. All right, I'm going to pull out the music. All right, and stop the recording. And start a fresh recording, and here we go. By the way, guys, we're going to be doing this, uh, those of y'all who are just joining us, um, we're going to be doing this a little out of order because Justin has got to get going. So we're going to do the meet, um, our feature presentation, which is what we're calling it now. And now time for our feature presentation. Um, <laughs> we're doing that um, first, and then I will do the pro tip and do the closing and all that sort of stuff. So uh, just come along for the ride. And if you guys have questions or comments or anything like that, please be sure to put them in the, uh, in the, the notes there. Justin will be checking them um, as, uh, you know, like in, in between talking and stuff like that. And if you have a question that's, you know, with what we're talking about, we'll definitely hammer that. But we've got 21 tips that we're going to go through uh, today for getting prepped for Easter. So, without any further ado, I am going to do our intro and welcome. <clears throat> hey guys, Happy New Year! Yes, it's New Year's! We're already, like, working our way through January, and guess what? I can't talk. <laughs> Got a little Matthew McConaughey going. Yeah, I did. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, guys? All right, all right, all right. Stir, stir, stir. Can't go do it. Gonna go get in my Buick and roll my boogers. <laughs> all right, here we go.
Hey guys, Happy New Year's 2018, and we are just now starting the year, and it's already time to get ready for Easter. We're going to be talking 21 tips, things that you need to get done right now in order to make your Easter weekend absolutely phenomenal. Boy, how was that? That was great. Man, I think I hurt something. Hey guys, welcome to another Rip Roaring episode. Hey guys, welcome to another Rip Roaring episode of CTA Live. My name is Dave Curley, and if we haven't ever met before, you don't know what CTA Live is. This is the podcast for Church Training Academy. ChurchTrainingAcademy.com is a website and membership site community where we all come together and learn how to use and exploit media and technology so that we can fulfill the Great Commission, spread the Word of God, and we're doing it all by exploiting every possible technology that we can. With me, as usual, every single week is Justin Nava, the legend. What's going on, guys? I'm coming at you live from my new studio. Check this out. Okay, hang we on. Have, we have, hang on. Let me, have, yeah, let, me, let me get it. Hang on. Here we go. Boom. There you go. Look at that. Yes, here we go. Look at this. Got a backdrop, bookshelf, got my Iron Man stuff. My wife finally gave me permission to kind of man cave this place out and uh, actually put up all my Iron Man stuff because I have like a whole two bookshelves of Iron Man collectibles and I've just had nowhere to put it because my wife, she likes things to look classy or nice. I mean, what what's up with that? Uh, but she gave me this corner of the office. And so here we are. And uh, you'll notice that the poster, not so much, but or the canvas, but the uh, bookshelf will change uh, week to week. And I've got like quite a few collectibles I can put up here. So that'll be, that'll be a lot of fun to play with. That is awesome. Is that, uh, I can't tell, is, is that a, is that like a dark Iron Man right there? Or is that Venom? That's a so dark that Iron Man. that is Iron Man. Oh man, I can't even remember that. I think it's like Mach 52, I think. Started in 2012 with the big Marvel reboot. And uh, yeah, that's a suit that, um, uh, he can basically uh, modify and car carry around a briefcase and it can modify itself into whatever. So like it can kind of just mutate and then it, his arm turns into a cannon or it can just mutate and it just turns into the Hulk buster. So like in the movies, he's still at, or in the early stages where he has to carry all this equipment around or have it flying around him and it assembles right. on him. Well, this black and gold suit, it actually, everything's like built inside and it just kind of mutates around him and turns into whatever he needs in the moment. That is extremely cool. I, I really. If anyone's still watching this, I appreciate you bearing <laughs> my thirty seconds of nerd out. <laughs> yes, yes, we are going to nerd out from time to time, guys. That's just the way we are. Okay, we yeah, are. Uh, we we are definitely geeks and, and nerds here, as well as tech tech technolog tech technologicians tech technologicians. Tech. I like that technologicians. Yeah, technologicians. It's, called, it's, it's yeah. called the modular armor. That's what it was called. The modular armor. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Let me guess. Somebody fed that to you in the chat room? No, I just just remembered. Oh, okay. That's good. Uh, by the way, guys, um, you remember you got little 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 little. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to say. <laughs> I was going to say something, and it literally went right out the window. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of of how how we how I would come out of the um. Um, of the pro tip. <laughs> all right, here we go. So, all right, so we just did the feature presentation uh, intro here. So, guys, we're gonna we're going to jump into our feature presentation here. Um, make sure that I've got myself a visual, uh, and I'm going to let's see that'll be coming back from a full screen. So I'm going to come back to the two here. Okay. So. Justin, as I understand it, you did a little math, and we are like ten weeks, like from, and, and as we're taping this, we're we're ten weeks from Easter. Is that right? That's right. Yesterday, I got an email from Brandon Cox, who uh, was on our show a couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and he reminded everyone we are ten Sundays away from Easter, which means we're like this week, we're ten weeks away from Easter. Oh, hey, speaking of the calendar. Did you know that Easter is on April Fool's Day this year? I did. I yeah. did. And we're already making preparations. We're not we're not going to hide any Easter eggs at the church, but we're still going to tell the kids to go hunt for Easter eggs. <laughs> that, see how long it takes them to figure out. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, I could just see it like 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 if we went back through history and 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 worked all the math out and stuff and it's like it turns out that 
Easter Sunday, the Resurrection Day, was on April 1st. And so they went to the tomb, and they're like, we need to prepare the body. And then Jesus is standing out there looking like an angel, you know, sitting there going, April Fools! Ha ha, gotcha! I'm alive! He is the original April Fool. Yeah, he is the, he's the original <laughs> prankster. <laughs> That's where it all came from, folks. You heard it first right here. We're talking deep, deep church theology and doctrine right here. Send your emails, uh, your angry emails to uh, don't care at churchtrainingacademy.com. No, That's right. That, that's the email address, the one that works guaranteed. <laughs> so, uh, so getting into it today, yes. we're going to talk, we're going to give you 21 things to prepare for Easter. Now, these are things that not everything applies to every church, and you may not have the manpower to do all 21 things, and that's okay. What we're going to do is when the, when the episode publishes, uh, next week now on Tuesday, we're actually going to create a checklist for you. That's easy to read. You can highlight, you know what, we don't have a live stream, so we don't need to prepare that, but we do have a guest Wi-Fi, So we need to prepare that, or we do have a welcome committee. So we need to prepare that. And you kind of pick your top five. Uh, I think most churches, unless you just have a staff of over 20, uh, most churches can pick five and, and find incredible wins by just preparing intentionally for these things. Because if, here's what happens all the time is you kind of, you kind of blink your eyes after Christmas and you're two weeks away from Easter and your pastor doesn't have a sermon ready. Your live stream still has issues. There's cabling still rotting on the stage that you haven't replaced. And so this is going to get you prepared starting today on things you need to audit, check meetings you need to have. And we're just going to kind of, we're going to kind of blow through them here because we only have 20 minutes and we have 21 things. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit faster, but we will have a checklist that you can download and we'll put it in the show notes below uh, when the actual episode pod, uh, publishes. Okay. So let's get started. Um, looking at our list here, I show that you think the most important thing that we need to do is pray. Is that, is that right? That's right. Number one thing you need to start doing today, and it's kind of like the obligatory Christian thing, but it's so super important is start praying. So right now, this week, your staff and leadership needs to start praying for Easter. Start praying for the, for the new people that are coming. Start praying for the people that come annually. Start praying for the families. Um, to to to, uh, to to use the day as a way to just further the gospel message. You know, when when someone's four year old niece asks, "What is Easter?" You know, um, start preparing, start getting your mind wrapped around that. Um, and then four weeks before, so we're gonna we're gonna split this up. You know, we'll do ten weeks out, four weeks out, and then the week of. So ten weeks before staff and leadership start praying. Four weeks before Easter, call on your congregation to pray. Do this from the stage. Do this from the pastor. Do it in an email, whatever. But tell your congregation, hey, guys, Easter's four days away. Half of America is going to be in church on this day. God can do some amazing things. Let's start praying for the people that we're going to have in our church on Easter Sunday. And then the week of, just simply keep praying. This one doesn't really have a new thing that you need to do the week of, but start praying. Uh, one thing that you can also do is maybe do like a 12-hour prayer thon where you have someone in the prayer room. If you have that praying consistently for 12 hours or 24 hours, you can do that the week of, but it's super important. You got to start with prayer. You know, in talking about the prayer room, that's something that we have at our church, and, and we've we've got people whose, whose primary ministry is to go in there uh, you know, daily or every few days or whatever, um, and and just go in there and spend concentrated time in prayer. One of the things that you could do, and you could probably do it here now, like nine or ten weeks out, is go ahead and put some specific things down on a list that are available to the folks in the prayer room that are reminding them to be praying specifically for the families that are going to be coming and for um, for those folks. So it's not just the church staff and the volunteers and stuff, but the active members in the, uh, in the church that are in these other areas of ministry, like the prayer ministry, can start doing that as well. Um, let me see. One of the things that, uh, that, that I've got is your lighting. Like your, and, and when I talk about your lighting, I talk about like, like the lighting in the, in the sanctuary, the church service and stuff. And that goes a couple of different ways. Number one, um, you know, the two biggest times that people are going to come visit your church throughout the year are going to be Christmas and Easter, okay? That's just the way it is. So expect more people to show up. Um, and since there's a lot of people that haven't been here in a year, um, you really need to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward in all these areas that you possibly can. Now, we made a note here about the lighting, like stage lighting and stuff like that, but I'm going to back that up and make sure that you're just going around in the sanctuary and, and looking at your chandeliers and your stuff like that and going, you know what, we've got a light out there. We've got a light out there, like make a map or make a notes or something about what you need and how many you need. And then 
you know, rent the scissor lift or whatever to come in so that you guys can start changing these things out because, you know, it, it, it's the little things where someone walks in and goes, gosh, I haven't been here in a, in a year, and look at all the stuff that they've done. They've added some new things, and, and they repainted, and, and, oh, look, there's a light bulb out over there. Oh, and look, there's a ceiling tile hanging and all this sort of stuff. So little things like that, okay? So be sure you're taking care of that facilities-wise in the, in the area where everybody's going to be. But then also when it comes to, like, the stage lighting, um, if you're – uh, a lot of the medium-sized churches have more professional lighting, LED lights and, and lighting consoles and stuff where you can uh, program it and change colors and do all that sort of stuff. Go ahead and start working on that now and planning that out. Get with the worship leader and figure out what it is that's going to be needed. Start getting some of the basics of that done and get things replaced if you need to. If you've got LED panels that are out or if you've got dimmer packs that are giving you problems or causing a loud hum or something like that, Go ahead. You've got some time to order replacements to get the guys to come in and fix it, whatever. Um, and then, you know, when you get into like the, the the four weeks out and stuff, you can start really locking in your sets. But if you're doing something special, chances are the worship team is already going to be practicing. Find out when that's going to be. Get with them. Make sure you have all that sort of stuff. If you're renting things, okay, like some churches will rent spotlights because they're doing a real pageant. They're doing a real a real big production or something. Go ahead and get with the uh, with the folks that you're going to be renting that from. And if you need to or you or a couple of your volunteers need to go over there and sit down with them and get shown how to work some of this stuff and practice in their demo room or something, start start putting some of that stuff into, into play now so that you're not cramming on Saturday morning when they come to set that stuff up or Friday afternoon or Friday evening when they're setting that stuff up. And everybody's got to get all crammed in for Sunday morning, get all the knowledge put in. Let that be the time that you're refining and stuff. So that's what uh, that's what I'm saying on lighting here. Yes, exactly. Number three is your sermon skin. Now, this is basically what you're going to be preaching on. <clears throat> this comes kind of a, 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 on the tail end of what Ben was talking about in last week's show, which is you want to skin your sermon in a way that's, you know, apply a skin to it, apply a theme, apply an idea uh, where people can access what it's about. So, um, you know, what are you teaching about? What's the main lesson? And then how can you kind of uh, put a wrap a wrap a <laughs> what am I trying to say, Dave? Wrap a uh, wrap a an look idea and, around it. Yeah, that's that's a, easily. Yeah. Wrap a look and uh, a look and feel. Go ahead. Yeah. Wrap a look and feel, almost like a brand around it. Right. So, exactly. Uh, it's not just an Easter sermon, but you're talking about upside down living or you're talking about, you know, something like that. So 10 weeks out, your pastor should start thinking about and if you're the pastor, you got to start thinking about what you're going to preach again. This is Billy Taylor, another guest that we've had here, says that Easter Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday for the church. This is right. our biggest Sunday of the year, and we're yep. going to have people here, so you got to be on your A game. So even if you don't know what you're going to preach until the week of, for Easter, you need to break that habit and start planning now. So 10 weeks out. Four weeks out, you should have your sermon kind of planned and know what you're going to talk about, at least the theme or the skin. So if you're going to make any kind of principles for that, posters, personal invite cards, flyers, Facebook uh, covers or something like that, get that done and passed out to your congregation. And then the week of just give one last push to your congregation. Hey, uh, we're talking about upside down living. If you have anyone that uh, in your life that kind of like think that like, man, they're, they're living in a way that I think that God can, or I, I know that God can, um, turn around, you know, kind of thing, then give them an invite card. You know, think about that one person, make one more push to get something out to the hands of the people that you want to invite. Yes, let's talk about number four, which is live streaming and the things you need to do to get prepped before. Remember, Dave, you only got two minutes. I've only got two minutes. I know I got to go very quickly. Number one, if you are wanting to add live streaming to your ministry, then now would be a good time to start getting that stuff prepped because you got basically nine weeks between now and the time that you you know can get everything worked out. Okay, so be thinking like that. If you're already live streaming, if you've already got folks. Um, that are watching and participating remotely and stuff, go ahead and just double check stuff. Get in there and you know what's going on, okay? Or the people who are, are doing it know what's going on. They know where the glitches are. They know, you know what, we really need to fix this, you know, because you'll be doing it. Right in the middle of the service, someone goes, you know what, gosh, this thing, we're going to have to fix this. You know, okay, well, now's the time to fix it. So if you've got problems with cameras, if you've got uh, problems with your comm system. If you got problems with any of the of the live streaming equipment, the computer, it keeps rebooting spontaneously. Or every third time you boot it up, you got to reboot it again. I mean, just these. I mean, it's Windows, right? So these little glitches and stuff like that. Go ahead and take the time now to get that stuff 
fixed. Hit Google, start doing some searches, check the manufacturer's website, do things like that, and go ahead and start getting these things done now. Because if you need to get a camera replaced or if you need to re you know reinstall Windows and get the entire streaming system rebuilt from ground up or something like that, you got plenty of time to do it. There's a lot of evenings and weekends between now and Easter that you can get all this worked out so that it all works nice and smooth. Also, if you have new things that you want to do, new things that you want to try, start trying them now and sort of get them dialed in. Use this service this weekend to try adding the lower thirds or changing little things like that. You can do all that sort of stuff in this ramp up so that when it comes time, everything is looking good. Because like you said, it is the Super Bowl, which means the people that aren't going to be there because they're sick, chances are they're going to be watching. And this can be a wonderful little showcase piece that you can put on your website for what a big event example is at your website. So let's make it all look good. Exactly. So uh, make sure that you do um, a lot of these tech stuff four weeks out. We recommend that not only do you have the scene set and everything, uh, but uh, get your volunteers together one month Definitely. out from Easter in March and do a retraining, do a Q and a, is there anything you want to ask that you haven't been able to ask, get them together and kind of make sure that there's going to be no questions once, once the, uh, once the service starts. All right. So number five, moving on service order, moving away from the technology, but I'll come back, but this is really important. You got to get this done before you can really get anything else done. And that's 10 weeks out. And you want to plan your order of service. Are you going to have kids seeing, is the choir going to do something special? Is there going to be a drama? Is there going to be a nativity scene reenactment? How long is the sermon going to be? What's the, what's the, uh, call to response or altar call going to be right now? You need to start planning that because again, it's not just an ordinary Sunday. Um, you're going to have all these people here. You want to make sure you got all your stuff together. Four weeks out, this is the deadline. Not, once you're four weeks out, um, it's it's tough, but you're, again, your leadership should know what the deal is. Four weeks out, nothing else gets added to the service. Um, the kids should know what they're singing. They should already have been practicing. The choir should know what they're singing. No more last, once you're four minutes out from Easter, that's last minute, okay? No last minute additions. Four weeks out, everyone should know what's happening. Uh, and then by the week of, by Monday or Tuesday, the worship team, anyone speaking, the deacons doing the offering prayer, everyone should have a copy of the order of service in their hands the week of. So there is no question of what's happening on Easter Sunday. Uh, to go along with that, there's going to be a lot of support uh, materials and stuff for the service. These are your slides. These are your um, you know, video elements, all this kind of stuff <clears throat> that whether it's announcement type stuff or, um, you know, notes from the pastor or anything like that, any kind of visual elements and stuff, these are going to be running on your computer in your media booth and they're going to be going through your projectors and stuff. So um, a, just a good rule of thumb with the projectors is when you install the projectors, be sure that you mark down the date that you install the projector and then sort of keep a little, little, uh, just a note or something about like bulb life. You know, the bulbs we have in here are rated for, you know, you know 2,000 hours or something. Okay, well, it's been, if you do the calculations, you know, 1,800 hours between the deal. Let's take a look at the bulb. Let's make sure that it's not going to burn out on us or anything like that. If you've got extras or whatever, might be a good time to go ahead and get those put in, especially if you got the scissor lift in there while you're doing the lights in the house and all that sort of stuff. Now's a good time to go ahead and get those things replaced and get that prepped. Now, Four weeks out, okay, again, your pastor should have most of what he's going to want visually taken care of, have an idea and all that, so get that stuff created. Get the, you know, if you've got the, the, the order of service and the songs and all that sort of stuff put in there, go ahead and get those slides made, get uh, get Pro Presenter all set up, you know, kind of get everything done so that you can get with your volunteers and do a little bit of rehearsing, what's going on, get, you know, Get a recording, if you want, of like the worship team practicing and doing run-throughs and stuff so that you can listen to it and kind of walk through it, even if you can't worship with them because they're up in the choir suite or something like that. Little things like that to just sort of practice and work with your volunteer team to make sure that everybody's kind of on the same page. Um, that's also a good time if you've, un if you've got the lighting cues and stuff that you're doing to kind of work on these together. Just like I said, just using a dry run of the, uh, of the worship team. Uh, and what they're going to be doing, just so you can just get some of your timings down. And then week of, you need to run through everything, make sure that nothing is missing. Get with the worship leader and double check, triple check, make sure this is the order. These are the ones we're going to do. Um, 
you're going to run through it this many times. You're going to run through the chorus, those little things like that, so that any minor changes or tweaks need to be done can be done, and they won't become a major thing, and all of a sudden you're on this slide, and he's on this slide, and the words are getting messed up. You don't want any of that sort of stuff to happen. What's next, buddy? I, I really like the idea of getting a, a recording of your worship team doing the set. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something you can practice along. Yeah, just I a like timing thing. All right, so number seven, Easter landing page. If you don't know what a landing page is, it's a dedicated page that serves one purpose. And in this case, it's to inform people of your Easter landing, of, of your Easter events. I gave uh, Dave a, a demo of the one that we used last year at my church. Uh, but really, this is a dedicated page. And if it can't be a landing page, just make it a page on your website. But it's all about Easter. This is all about uh, when, when it is, where it is what to expect, what events are going on. Are you having an Easter breakfast? Are you having an Easter egg hunt? I like to have a personal invite from the pastor. Just record a video. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, you know, a map is great. And then do some FAQs. Where do I park? How do I dress? What is the music like? Uh, and then and then I like to include a little bit more for kids because I know especially parents with kids, those are the ones that come on Easter and only Easter. Or So if they're looking for a church and you're the ones to address what their kids can be doing or will be doing, that's going to put give you a leg up on exactly what's going on. So we'll have we'll have a, a demo link inside of there uh, for people to see that. But basically, it's a real basic page. You should have that done about 10 weeks out or at least start working for it. Uh, on, on four weeks out, that's when you make it live and start putting it in all your promotional material. We use the link Easter at FBE. That's our Easter at FBE.com. That goes on our cars, our invites, our slides, our social media. That's what we blast out. And then the week of, I call it an Easter takeover, where you redirect your whole web page to that landing page. So even though um, you know we have Easter at FBE is our Easter page and fbechurch.com is our website, uh, the week of Easter, when you go to fbechurch.com, it takes you straight to that Easter landing page. Uh, that way, there's no confusion. Most of your traffic is going to be looking for Easter service times. Just redirect them right to that landing page. Um, when... Uh... When you're starting to get like equipment checks and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you're taking a look at the audio. Okay, so get with the audio engineer or the two or three engineers maybe that that sort of run the board and, and are in charge of the mics and all that sort of stuff. You guys need to go through the equipment and any kind of glitches or anything that you've had. You know, every few times it does this or where's that hum coming from, stuff like that. Go ahead and start working that stuff out now. Um, you want to double check if, if the pastor's mic has given him problems every now and then. Now's a good time to get it replaced, get it fixed, change out the capsule, do anything like that. Make sure, guys, as well, that you have, if you're if you're using a lot of wireless stuff, make sure you've got fresh batteries. Um, if you're using rechargeable batteries, be sure that these are newer rechargeable batteries versus older rechargeable batteries because the older ones may not hold the charge as long. And last thing you want is in the middle of the sermon, you know, and he came or, from the... Uh, uh, you don't want that happening. You don't want your pastor saying that he came forth the grave and everyone looked at him and said he is risen, getting missed. Yeah, everyone, okay? everyone passively listening is just like, what happened? What, what's wrong with my recording? That's right. <laughs> so anyway, so like 10 weeks out, guys, now, okay, start going through that sort of stuff and get stuff replaced. About four weeks out, guys, you're going to want to uh, get with the volunteers and make sure that anybody that's going to be involved with doing this knows what to do, knows how to check the sound, knows how to you know make sure that the mics are turned on and stuff like that. Hey, and... Listen, if you've got new people on your worship team, get with them and just make sure that they know that we're using these kind of mics. These are new from last time and stuff. Here's how you turn it on. Here's how you turn it off. You know, that sort of stuff. Just little things like that. Um, and then, obviously, the weekend as you're doing it, like so Friday night, if y'all are having a rehearsal, full sound check. You're testing everything. Saturday morning, fixing whatever didn't work on Friday night. Saturday, y'all are doing a, another sound check and all that. And then Sunday morning, before anybody gets there, you guys get there early and get things checked. Get with the musicians. Make sure everything is going to work good. You do not want to be a distraction on the day that some of these people is the only time that they're coming. You don't want any sound to be a distraction. That's right. Uh, so we talked about Easter landing pages, and now we're going to go to the actual website. So your main church website, 10 weeks out, you need to do an audit. Check for out-of-date items, bad information, ministries that don't belong anymore. 
again, we talk about uh, Christmas photos, those should be off. And if you need a list of other things to check, you can go to betterchurchwebsite.com. Right. We've listed uh, seven church website essentials, and that will tell you exactly what you need. That way, if people are checking your website before you do the Easter takeover, they will not be distracted. Four weeks out, that's when you put your Easter info up front and center. Hey guys, we got Easter coming up. We're going to have a lot of good stuff. Put that front and center on the website um, and, and put the, the calls to action to take you to the Easter landing page. And then again, the week of Easter, your web, your church website is, 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 does not exist. It, only the Easter website exists. So redirect your, your main church page over to your Easter landing page uh, and, and make that your homepage. Make that the one thing that your website is the week of. Uh, the next thing is testimonial videos. These are um, these are huge church wide. I mean, just if your church, you know, in general. If you haven't started doing them, now's a good time to go ahead and start doing them because you are going to be getting a lot more attention. So get now. Get with the folks that are um, that 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 you think have have really good testimonies, really impactful testimonies and stuff. And be sure you get kind of a range of them. You don't want you don't want it to be, you know, I used to I used to be a pimp and now Jesus saved me. You know, you don't want like four of those or five of those or something like that. You want a nice, you know, a nice, nice range of testimony videos that will ap- appeal to different segments of the people. Go ahead and get those identified, get with those people, get them shot, get them edited, get them all prepped and stuff. And then four weeks out, you're going to start releasing these things on social media. You can put them on your church's website. You know, you may want to turn on at that point the testimonial page or um, what you know, the the changing lives page or whatever like that. You want to start putting those in position. Share them on social. Share them on Instagram. Do one minute ones that you put up on Instagram. You know the two five minute ones that you do on Facebook. That sort of stuff. Okay, and then take the one that you think has the most impact, and then maybe make that a part of the service. Get with your pastor. Get with uh, the worship team and all that, and share that. You're gonna have people coming in and focusing on your church and the experience and all that for the first time, or for the first time in a long time, now's a good time to see if a personal story or two can change somebody's life, because that may be the only thing that is needed to spark them into a long-lasting relationship with Christ. That's right. Going into social media, there's a lot that we can go into social media, but I'm only going to hit the highlights. 10 weeks out, you need to start planning your posts and campaigns. What invites are going to go on which day at what time? What ad campaigns are we running? What's the target audience? What's the what's the call to action we want them to do? What's the commitment we want them to make? And then four weeks out, go live with everything. Start your Eastbrook Facebook advertising. Start talking about, start talking about it on your social media, you know, your organic posts that you put out. And announce to your congregation to start sharing your posts. If someone in your congregation sees your post on Facebook, um, you know, at, tell them from the stage, this is super important that we get the word out. And if you're not comfortable handing out invite cards, if you're an introvert like me, hitting share on Facebook is a tremendous ministry. So tell your congregation four weeks out, start sharing our social media posts. Then the Sunday before Easter, Palm Sunday, remind your congregation to keep sharing posts and revisit the ad campaign if you did do ads or if you did do posts. Look at the last three weeks of posts that you did, find the ones that did the best and double down on them. So if you do have one ad campaign that's performing better than the others, shut the other ones down and just run that one, put all your money into that one that week. Uh, And then any posts, uh, if you notice question posts in the last three weeks have done better performance, only ask questions the week of Easter. If you notice videos have performed better, then then only do videos the week of Easter. Even if you have to like reshare uh, videos that you did last year or something like that, uh, use your best judgment on that. But social media, that's kind of what you want to do going into Easter. Um, I mentioned this earlier when I was talking about the lights and the facility and uh, you know and the worship center and stuff like that. That just take that idea and amplify it for the entire building. Anywhere that people are going to be, the guests are going to be and stuff, you guys need to start looking for um, all these little things that you may have become nose blind or sight blind to. A little stain on the wall, um, hand marks on the uh, on the backs of the pews that need to get cleaned off or anything like that. Um, stretch the carpet, get it, you know, the carpet's starting to get bubbled up a little bit or something like that. Get the carpet guys out 10 weeks out, you know, over, over the next several weeks. Get them out, have it all stretched get ceiling tiles replaced, do all that sort of stuff. Check the bathrooms. You know, you're getting a little sewer gas smell, something like, go ahead and get the plumber out there. If you got problems with the air conditioning, anything facility wise, major stuff, minor stuff, go ahead and start getting it taken care of. And then, you know, 
four weeks out or something, bring in some people. If you get, you know, bring some of your friends from another church, have them do a walkthrough and see what they notice, just to make sure. Again, we're putting our best foot forward out, uh, and then week week of just kind of walk through and make sure that no kids have wiped boogers on the wall in the nursery or anything like that. All this different kind of stuff, little little bits and pieces, a nice good dusting and cleaning that you can do. Go ahead and get that taken care of. Yeah, the other the, another thing you want to plan, not just social media, but like we talk about almost every week here at Church Training Academy, is get your email marketing straightened away. Remember, social media is just one tool and an entire communication strategy, and email is another tool that you can use. So starting 10 weeks out, uh, if your pastor is not emailing your congregation at least once a week, encourage them to do that. It doesn't have to be an announcement. It doesn't have to be something. Just share a story, share a uh, an insight. What did you read this morning? Doesn't have to be preachy. Doesn't have to be teachy. Just have the the pastor just write a, a, a 100 word email on what he's excited for, what he enjoys, a childhood ministry, and get the church used to start receiving emails every week. Because four weeks out, you're going to start planning your email follow up for your visitors. Uh, we do have one. We haven't officially launched it, but here's a little sneak peek. You can go to emailforvisitors.com and you can sign up. And we have a done for you five email template. Uh, that you can that you that's pretty much done for you. you just plug in your church or pastor information and you can send those out to visitors because on Easter you will hopefully get some connection cards or connect cards or whatever you, you got with people's emails on them and you can follow up with them ask them uh, what their feedback was was there how did they enjoy the service um, what the ministries they're interested in share kind of some testimonies of the church some wins of the ministries and those emails can help bring people back so uh, starting 10 weeks out I would encourage you to email your list once a week preferably from the pastor four weeks out start planning your email follow-up campaigns with email for visitors.com and then the week of, I would even go so far as start emailing the congregation every day, getting them hyped up for Easter. Um, one of the things that you need to check uh, is your signage around the campus. Uh, and this is to make sure, it, this is everything from making sure that the outside sign, if it's like, you know, like, like one of those uh, semi-opaque signs that has lights behind it, that the light bulbs are fresh in there. If it's digital signage, make sure that, you know, the, the, uh, all the LEDs are working. You don't have like little patches of, of LEDs out or anything like that. Do things like that. But then also double check and make sure that, you know, the stuff in the, in, in the corridors, all of that stuff is clean. Uh, nothing has been, you know, if it's vinyl, nothing has been peeled off. All the, these little aesthetic things like that. Also, now's a good time, 10 weeks out, that if you've got, um, you know, some of the branding kind of mismatches where the sign on the outside has the old brand, but all the stuff on the new has it. Th now's the time that you can get that sign ordered and get it replaced and all that beforehand, okay? And then... You know, four weeks out, bring in, you know, a couple of your friends or something and say, hey, look, we just been working on all these signs and stuff. Tell me if anything jumps out at you. It's just being glaringly wrong that we need to get fixed. Do things like that. And then week of, again, just make sure that everything is 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 proper, that, you know, letters haven't been peeled off or anything like that. Just it's, it's attention to detail uh, with the signage. Again, you want to make it easy for people to flow through the building uh, and get where they need to go as easy as possible. That's right. Uh, we're running up right along my deadline here. So I'm going to share one more and then I'm going to get out. And this is one that um, that I think not a lot of churches think about. And that is going to be your guest network. Now, if this doesn't apply for you, then obviously this is one of the ones you don't have to do. But number one, 10 weeks out, audit your Wi-Fi. Are there any dead spots? Are there any rooms that doesn't get Wi-Fi? Is there a weird disconnect when you walk into this into the coffee bar? And, and, and figure out what you need to do to get that working. Add a router, add something else. Uh, and then and then figure out if you have enough bandwidth. You know, If you're live streaming and you cut off guest network, maybe reevaluate. Because that's an important thing. People my age and people younger come to a church and they're like, all, all the holy ones blessings, but they password locked their Wi-Fi. So if you do have a guest network, make sure everything's working four weeks out, start replacing equipment, start checking cables. And then the week of more, more like the Friday before Easter, make sure all the staff computers, if they're not being used, shut them down. Um, just a real quick story. One time our, our church, who was also a school decided the computer lab of 30 computers all decided to download windows updates all at once. <laughs> And it completely shut down our network uh, because all of those guys were using everything and we had no more internet to share. So make sure if you have computers on campus that aren't on use Sunday, Friday, the day before, the, the, the days before, make sure you shut them all down. So Dave, I got to get out of here. Okay. Uh, do you want to do one more and then we'll save the last five for the blog post next week? Yes, we can do that. Um, let's, uh, let's see here, blah, blah, blah. 
Okay, there it is. Me. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'm gonna go ahead and check out. So I appreciate you guys. We had a really good, um, really good comments going. So keep it up. I'll be in the chat box as I'm on my way back to work and kind of listening to it in my ear. And I appreciate you guys. And and if you have any questions, leave a comment below, and we'll post the full article with the checklist on next week when the when the actual podcast releases. Okay, guys, the next thing that you need to check is um, the security audit for your children's section, your children's ministry, that area. Um, a lot of churches are doing online check-in or, or kiosk check-in, things like that. So now's the time to make sure that everything is good. Most of those systems are all like Windows-based. Make sure that any updates that need to be applied to them are applied, and then like automatic updates are turned off. There is nothing more frustrating than going to a kiosk to start doing something. And right as you start doing it, it's like trying to do a Windows update. You know, say, do you want to reboot? Let's pick a time. Let's we, let's let's check this off our list, stupid Windows 10. Um, you don't want any of that sort of stuff getting in the way. Um, and you also want to make sure that every single one of these kiosks is there and is working. You also want to make sure that the badge system, the scanning system for the volunteers, all that sort of stuff, moving from a, uh, a an insecure area, the hallway and all that, to a secured area where they may have to badge in, um, you know, like during the service or something like that, or any of that sort of stuff. You want to make sure all of that is working in tip-top condition. And you also want to make sure that if your system has, you know, larger churches, how they may have like the the the, the little displays in the middle of the auditorium or on the edges of the auditorium that have like a number, you know, like 103, that's our daughter, you know, and she's throwing a fit, you know, those little notification systems or pagers or anything like that. Make sure all that stuff is working. Um, and the best thing to do is to talk to the people who are using those on a daily basis. Talk to some of the families. You know, is everything going okay with the security system? You having problems badging in? You having problems getting notified when your kid's throwing a fit? Anything like that. Go ahead and get all that sort of stuff taken care of. Also, four weeks out, get with your volunteers and the, the people that are going to be adding to the uh, to the service or to the, the the children's ministry. Make sure that they're aware of the security protocols and such. Also, make sure that any background checks are done for any of the workers, the nursery workers or anything like that. Most churches now, if you're going to be working with kids, you got to go through a background check and all that. So just make sure that all that stuff's taken care of and get that done as early as possible, Okay. Um, and then, again, week of, make sure all the kiosks are good to go. Um, all the supplies are ready. All the toys are sanitized. Guys, we, we've got this flu going around like crazy. Sanitizing the play area, the equipment, the toys, the surfaces, all that sort of stuff. That, guys, that is imperative. The doorknobs, the push bars, the panels that they're touching, all that sort of stuff. Seriously. And I mean this, we had a friend who lost one of their twins, eight years old, died with, from one of these variant strains of the flu. Not going to go into any details and stuff, but this stuff is out there. So make sure everything is sanitized because these little crumb crunchers are going to pick up something and stick it in their mouth. Let's at least make it clean beforehand. That is what we have. These are 16 of our 21 uh, checks and uh, things to consider. Uh, for your Easter, as you prepare for your Easter service. We've gone through 16 of them. The rest of them will be in our blog post uh, and in our checklist. We'll go over them. They include, I will just hit these real quick, offline follow-up for your guests, okay? Um, volunteer positioning um, for different ministries, staffing up a little bit for people like during the invitation time, um, counselors, things like that. Um, the offline Easter promotion, that's number 19. That is the flyers, the ads, um, the door hangers, uh, things like that, the things that, you know, the cards you put in people's, uh, on the windshield of their car, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then the parking area, the outside stuff um, on the campus, the parking area, the lighting in the parking lot, all that sort of stuff, the signs, those sort of things. And then the final thing is the cleanup, removing every sign that Easter was ever there very quickly so that you can show that you are current and that, you know, we still don't have our Easter promotion and our Easter pictures and stuff like that. The only sign that Easter was there would needs to be like on your website um, in a photo gallery or a video montage or other things about, hey, we had a great Easter. Here's some highlights, you know, things like that. Otherwise, all the signage, all the good stuff, we don't need to see the little plastic eggs, all that sort of 
All that stuff needs to be gone. Every little strip of green plastic grass, all that stuff has to be gone. So anyway, that is our very extensive list of Easter preparation, our 21 things that you need to be doing 10 weeks out, four weeks out, and the week of Easter. Whew. All right. Now I'm going to move to our let – me, let me get Zoom closed out here for a sec, guys. I'm going to take a break, and if you guys have any questions or anything, y'all can holla. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to check the chat room real quick, and then I'm going to jump into our pro tip. Uh, line check, line check, line check. <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris Hall is like, line check, line check, line check. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the audio stuff. Um, be listening for like those cycle hums that you get when you have like a, a, a guitar cable, you know, going uh, close to the power strip and you get that, that 60 hertz cycle hum and stuff. You may need to get some direct boxes or something to uh, filter that sort of stuff out. Check all that stuff. Check cabling. Make sure that if you suspect a cable is bad, mark it as bad, throw it away, and get a replacement one. Uh, Christopher says, uh, ask a friend that has never been to your church to come to the building with you and go through it uh, together and see what needs to be fixed. Yeah, fresh set of eyes. Uh, that's that's huge. Uh, let's see. Hey, Jordan. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to... Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do our pro tip. So we are now moving into our pro tip segment here. <clears throat> hey, guys, today's pro tip is one of my favorite tools, period. And, and when I say one of my favorite tools, I use this two or three times a week at, as a, at a minimum. And I've been using this since, like, Oh, gosh, 2006, 2007, something like that. It's called MPEG Stream Clip. It's a video um, editor, transcoder. It's a, it's a video utility. And it is, it is one of the arrows in my video quiver um, that I, I anywhere, anywhere I am, I install MPEG Stream Clip. It's, it's available on Windows. It's available on Mac. Trying to remember, is there a Linux version or not? Anyway, um, it is a free open source video utility that lets you transcode footage. So you can open up a file in there. You can change the frame rate. You can change the bit rate. You know, if it's like it's like something really huge, like a you know a 4K 100 megabit MP4 file, and you need it to be a 1080p that you know is like. 50 megabytes or something, then you can do that in here. You can change it. You can change the frame rate. If it's like, you know, shot on somebody's old phone and it's like 15 frames a second and you need to get it 30 frames a second, you can get it into that. You can take it from being an MP4 or an AVI or an MPEG or something and change it to another format. It is really cool. And I use it for all kinds of different stuff. I use it to fix footage that, you know how like on your phone, You'll you'll shoot stuff with uh, with like your iPhone or your Android phone, and then you'll take it into uh, an editing program, and it's like it's out of sync sometimes. It's like the the lips and the words aren't out and stuff like that because it's shot using variable frame rate. Okay, that's a huge problem. Has been a huge problem. Thankfully, the latest uh, edition of uh, Adobe um, uh, Adobe Premiere 2018 um, addresses that and takes care of that. Final Cut works with that. Okay. But other apps sometimes have problems. Well, you can eliminate it across the board by using Adobe uh, uh, MPEG Stream Clip and specifying the frame rate. It's, it's simple stuff like that. These, this little tool is absolutely it's indispensable. I absolutely love it. So I'm going to give you guys a walkthrough of that um, for our uh, pro tip next week. It'll be our, our blog post next week. I think you're going to love it. So if you haven't played with it, just go do a search for MPEG Stream Clip. Check the notes below and stuff. If you want to see how to use it and see how I use it and stuff, next week's blog post, I'm going to do a cool demo on it. MPEG, M-P-E-G, MPEG Stream Clip. You're going to love it. All right. <clears throat> Guys, this episode of Church Training Academy, blah, blah, blah. Guys, this episode of CTA Live is sponsored by 
easylivestreaming.com. If you guys have been thinking about adding live streaming to be a part of your ministry, if you've been wanting to live stream your services or or see how you can add live online streaming elements to your ministry or throughout various aspects of your ministry and stuff like that, we've got a free guide for you. You can go get our book, Easy, let's see, was it? Live streaming for churches the easy way by going to easylivestreaming.com. Grab a copy of that. We'll show you how you can add live streaming to your ministry at several different levels. I mean, but, I mean, there's actually like four modes of live streaming, okay? Two of them you can start doing right now. Like, go read the guide, and you can start live streaming in your ministry as soon as you close the guide. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's that good. And then we can also show you how to start live streaming your services, kick it up, get really great quality. All that sort of stuff is all in our Live Streaming for Churches, the easy way guide at easylivestreaming.com. <clears throat> all right, I got to figure out how to close. I can't close because Justin's not here. <laughs> I don't know how to close. How do I close, y'all? Hi, Chris. Um, yeah, okay. So Jordan, the hyper geek, um, and I, I mean that in a good way, um, says that you can use FFmpeg on the command line in Linux. Yes, you can. Nobody knows how to use command line. <laughs> but yes, you can. And if you take a look at the syntax and the way that you use it and stuff, you want to use MPEG stream clip. Uh, let's see. Christopher Hall says we had a very good dense show. Yes, it was dense. And, and compounded by the fact, it, it did go by quick, right? Compounded by the fact that uh, Justin has to get back because he's he's meeting with a um, uh, bunch of important people like right now, like they're in a big meeting right now and stuff. So, yeah, we did cram a whole lot into this. And when, when we were talking about the show idea, what, uh, what are we going to do on next week's show and stuff? He's like, hey, let's come up with like a huge list of stuff to do. <laughs> let's like the most comprehensive list we can think of. It came out to be 21 things. So not 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 too bad. Um, only nerds use command line. Yes, I know. Well, if you've met Jordan, you know that he is a very technical, very geeky, very brilliant uh, nerd, right? Um, and uh, he's he knows this stuff. Jordan is the guy that can probably he he he's the guy that could like take all this command line stuff and then actually like like build it into like a user interface so that everyone else can use it. So, and that's actually what they did. FFmpeg is 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 like a library of uh, commands and tools and, and all this sort of stuff that um, is used in a lot of video software all across the board. Everybody's got hooks into FFmpeg. It, it's really cool. Anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm a nerd, and I don't even use command line. Yeah, well, you're not a true nerd, Justin. You're like a half nerd, a partial nerd. You look like a nerd, but you don't act like a nerd. Anyway, I'm going to close the show here, guys, and get on with it. <clears throat> what did we call this? So there you have it, our 21-part Easter preparation checklist. Like we said, you may not need to use all 21 of these things, but I can tell you that if you will put every aspect of this in that does apply to you and stuff, you'll be setting yourself up for a much more successful and smooth weekend. So hope this has been of help to you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Take what you've learned today and go out there and change some lives. Seriously. Take what you've learned today and go out there and change lives. Blah, blah, blah. I got tongue tied, man. Tongue tied. All right, guys. Uh, start. By the way, starting next week, um, we are going to be tightening up our show. I haven't even talked to Justin about this, so Justin's probably looking at this, going, "What? What? What?" We're going to have to tighten up our show because my production schedule for a daily show that I do has been moved up a couple of hours. So we're going to be tightening this show up even tighter uh, and doing a little bit shorter segments. Uh, but I think that can only make it better. So, guys, thanks again, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Um, I have to run. Uh, let's see. I'm check the comments here real quick. Uh, Christopher, I will admit I'm a nerd and I don't use command line, but I'm trying to get better at it. 
I don't think we need to use command line anymore when it really comes down to it. I mean, I mean that's a. I'm trying to think of the last time I used command line. I mean, it was it was stuff like like changing permissions or something like system wide. You know what I'm saying? Little things like that. Like uh, I need to see like I'm on a Mac, so it's like I need to see all the hidden files. Okay, well, do a little command line, and then you see them, you delete them, and you know change them back. I mean, it's that sort of stuff. Uh, I know there's a lot of guys that use command line, but I think I think folks are are writing software and doing tips and uh, doing tools and all this kind of stuff that um, have kind of made it so that we don't have to, thankfully, don't have to use it and stuff, where you don't have to, like, open up a command line, execute a Python script or something like that, you know. Ugh. That stuff, it, it's, uh, it's like we can get wrapped up in trying to do all this, like, hyper-technical stuff to the exclusion of actually being productive. Um, I use the commander. What's the commander, Jordan? What is the commander? Uh, those those uh, those tape things that you put on the wall, and then you can like hang up with a hook on it. And you can hang up heavy stuff, and then you can just sort of pull it, and it goes away and doesn't leave a mark on the wall. Is that what you're talking about? I know those are command strips. All right, guys. I uh, I hope you all have a fantastic week. I have got to go. I've got a million things I get to do. I got to get taken care of before a show that I'm doing at three today. So I will talk to y'all later. Have an absolutely fantastic week, guys. Uh, those of y'all that are CTA members, don't forget we've got Mastermind Live tonight, live eight o'clock central, from about eight to ten, depending on how many questions are asked and and how how deep we need to go uh, with some of these roadblocks and stuff, but. Tonight, that and by the way, if y'all don't know, that's one of the benefits of of being a CTA member, a member of Church Training Academy, is that you have access to our private CTA Insiders group, and every other week we do a live coaching call. A we, just anybody that's a member can join in. We all get on Zoom, and Justin and I and the group, because there's a lot of insights coming from the people in the group. Um, we basically put everybody in the hot seat that needs to be in the hot seat, and Help them with a roadblock. You know, I don't know how to do this. Can you show me how to do this? Yeah, you know, let's 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 do it. Let's. Uh, I'll, I'll make one right now. Did one with uh, with Anthony Bowman, uh, like before Christmas, where he said, "Hey, I I made this video and I I got it out there and stuff, but it's not as good as I want it to be. Can you go through and show me how to make it better?" So I took his video and I brought it into Premiere. And I started cutting it up and making a few changes here and there just to show him when you're editing at that time, think like this, and here's how it can look. You know, things like that. It just made him a better editor. You know, that's cool. That's the kind of stuff that we do in our mastermind life. Excuse me, heavens. This thing is giving me the, the hick burps. Um, that's what we do in our uh, in our live mastermind coaching group is uh, help each other get through the roadblocks and make our technical things better, make our marketing better, make our our email better, make our websites better, make everything all these things that we're doing in our ministry help each other kind of get them polished off and and move on to the next level. So, if you guys ever want to join in and participate, you can go to is it joincta.com? I have set up so many different e uh, URLs. Let me see. Joincta.com. Is that what it is? No, it's churchtrainingacademy.com slash join. I think that's right. Yes, churchtrainingacademy.com slash join. You can get some more information on joining Church Training Academy. Anyway, guys, have a fantastic week. Love you all.